Good evening from the state of Kuwait. Welcome to the 7 o'clock news for Friday, the 26th of December 2014. I am Dalia Bagram with the headlines for tonight. Syrian planes and helicopters drop barrel bombs on the so-called Islamic State targets, killing at least 45 people. Palestinian factions call for the resumption of the Egyptian-brokered peace talks with Israel. Pakistani forces kill the alleged planner of the recent deadly attack on a school as violence claims more lives. Memorial services are held in Asia for the victims of the Indian Ocean tsunami on its 10th anniversary. Hello and welcome. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights said that at least 45 civilians were killed and some 175 wounded overnight when aircraft bombed a northern Syrian city controlled by the so-called Islamic State. According to the group, helicopters and warplanes dropped barrel bombs on residential and industrial areas in the city of Al Bab and neighboring Al Qabasin northeast of Aleppo. The group added that uh, there had been an increase in air raids by the Syrian military across the opposition held the areas in the last three days with at least 110 civilians killed in more than 470 airstrikes on rebel held areas in the last 72 hours. Meanwhile, Jordan's military denied claims by the IS group to have shot down one of its warplanes, which crashed in Syria after the pilot was captured by the militants. Israeli Defense Forces, the IDF, shot at two Palestinians when they were allegedly trying to approach the Gaza-Israel border fence. In a separate incident, Israel Navy forces shot at Palestinian fishing boats by the northern shore of the Gaza Strip. Gaza residents reported hearing gunshots off the coast of Gaza City, but no one was injured in the incident. The incidents came after a shooting along the border between Gaza Strip and Israel in which a soldier was seriously wounded by Hamas fire and a top Hamas activist was killed when the IDF troops fired back. Amid rising tension between Gaza and Israel, several resistance factions agreed to stand united in the face of Israeli aggression and submit a memorandum to Egypt to enforce the brokered ceasefire agreement in late August. More with Majd al-Wahidi from Gaza. Leaders of several resistance factions revealed that they decided to submit a memorandum to the Egyptian mediator. Such memo will include Israeli's violations to the ceasefire agreement brokered by Egypt. The movements also stressed that they are committed to the ceasefire as long as Israel doesn't violate the signed agreement. I believe Hamas is not interested in a new war and will continue its self-control due to the complicated and sensitive situation, but the prolonged of siege and the delay of reconstruction are indeed explosive elements and could lead to a new round of self-defense. Earlier on Thursday, an urgent meeting for Palestinian factions was held in the city to discuss the situation and take unified action in the face of Israeli escalations. This came after a serious confrontation was set off between Hamas and Israel on the border of Gaza. The latest tensions left observers and human rights groups highly worried about the situation. We urge the international community in order to intervene to stop the Israeli grave violations to the Palestinian-Israeli ceasefire. At the same time, we are calling on the international community in order to pressure Israel to lift the siege totally and to guarantee the security of the Palestinians who are under occupation. We are calling also the Palestinian consensus government in order to come to Gaza to to take over all its responsibilities, mainly the crossings, 
in order to help elevate in elevating the suffering of the people of Gaza. Despite the ceasefire agreement to halt the summer's conflict and consider long-term deal, Israel continues to besiege Gaza, open fire at fishermen and agricultural lands, and impose travel restrictions. People in Gaza say that there is no meaning for any ceasefire between Israel and Gaza without ending Israel's crippling blockade that was imposed since 2007. Majlou Haidi, Kuwait TV, Gaza. Thank you, Majd. In Pakistan, two suspected U.S. drones fired missiles at militant hideouts in the northwest part of the country today, killing at least seven fighters. Pakistani intelligence officials said both of the latest airstrikes took place in the remote North Waziristan region, targeting Uzbek and Punjabi Taliban hideouts. Meanwhile, the head of police administration in Khyber tribal region said that security forces have killed the alleged planner of the recent school attack in the city of Peshawar that left 148 people killed. Security troops uh, conducted a raid in the Bara area overnight where they fought a gun battle with the militant commander known as Saddam while his six complices, accomplices were injured and arrested. The head of the African Union mission in Somalia said the continental body remains committed to supporting the Somali people and government in rebuilding their country. Ambassador Maman Sidiko said that no amount of attacks will deter the mission from carrying out its responsibility. The remarks came a day after eight gunmen infiltrated the main African Union base in Mogadishu and killed nine people, including five peacekeepers. Sadiko said that he discussed with senior commanders the need to enforce to the fullest all security measures to ensure that such an attack would not happen again. Militia fighters in Libya have killed at least 22 soldiers in a surprise attack during a failed offensive to seize some of the country's main oil turmoils, uh, terminals. Security sources said the militiamen belonging to the Fajr Libya launched the attack on Al Sidra port by firing rockets from speedboats, setting an oil tank on fire. The soldiers damaged three of the vessels during the clashes in which the fighters were eventually repelled. The latest clashes pushed oil prices higher in Asia today with a spokesman for State National Oil Corporation saying that the fighting has reduced Libya's crude output to 352,000 barrels a day. South Korea, the United States and Japan will sign their first joint intelligence sharing pact next week to better cope with North Korea's increasing nuclear and missiles threats. According to a statement from Seoul's Defense Ministry under the latest initiative, the South and Japan would share intelligence only on North Korea's nuclear and missile programs via the U.S. The statement said the pact would enable the three countries to swiftly respond to any North Korean provocation at a time when its threats are growing following a third nuclear test in February 2013. Moving to India, where hundreds of protesters took to the streets in the main city in northeastern Assam state today to protest against the killing of at least 80 people by tribal militants early this week. Police believe that a faction of the National Democratic Front of Bodoland fighting for a separate state for ethnic Bodos was behind coordinated attacks on tea plantation workers and their families the deadliest in years. The protesters uh, shouted slogans against the provincial government for failing to provide security to the people. Meanwhile, India has sought cooperation from Bhutan, Myanmar and Bangladesh in an offensive against the tribal militant groups. 
An aide to the head of Ukraine's state security service said that Kiev and pro-Russian separatists will exchange hundreds of prisoners soon, as the military reported a slight increase in rebel attacks. The agreement to swap 125 Ukrainian servicemen for 225 rebels held by Kiev followed peace talks between envoys of Ukraine, Russia, the separatist and European security watchdog last Wednesday. Exchanging prisoners is one of the criteria of a 12-point peace protocol, which also includes a ceasefire agreed by Kiev and rebels in September. But most of the plan has not yet been implemented due to repeated violations of the ceasefire and because separatists defied Kiev by holding leadership elections. The military said earlier in the day that rebels had slightly stepped up their attacks on Ukrainian positions in the east of the country. Kosovo's interior minister said the police arrested a Serb national suspected of planning a terrorist attack. In a press conference, the minister said that the suspect was arrested in the Kosovan capital, Pristina, overnight with 12.2 kilos of explosives in his car. Authorities have warned of a potential backlash from radicals after dozens were arrested earlier this year, suspected of fighting alongside the extremists abroad. Survivors of Asia's 2004 tsunami and relatives of its 226,000 victims cried and prayed as they gathered along the Indian Ocean shorelines today for memorials to mark the 10th anniversary of a disaster that still leaves a mark on the region. When a 9.515 magnitude quake opened a fault line deep beneath the ocean a decade ago, it triggered a wave as high as 17.4 meters, which crashed ashore in more than a dozen countries, wiping some communities off the map in seconds. Memorials were held in the worst affected countries, India, Thailand, Sri Lanka and Indonesia, where hundreds of people gathered to hold ceremonies to honor those who perished. For a chance to see our rebels, our reports again, please visit our YouTube channel at MOI Kuwait News. Before we end, here's a quick reminder of today's headlines. Syrian planes and helicopters drop barrel bombs on the so-called Islamic State targets, killing at least 45 people. Palestinian factions call for the resumption of the Egyptian-brokered peace talks with Israel. Pakistani forces kill the alleged planner of the recent deadly attack on a school as violence claims more lives. Memorial services are held in Asia for the victims of the Indian Ocean tsunami on its 10th anniversary.